The Nintendo Switch eShop can be a very scary place. Lots of games come out, games you've never heard of, games you know nothing about, and it can be hard to decide what games do I actually want to buy. Well, that's why people like me exist, because I play a lot of Switch eShop games. And today on the channel, we have four new recently released Nintendo Switch eShop games that I definitely think are worth your coin. Games that you might have overlooked or games that you might not have been interested in before watching this video. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about some new New Nintendo Switch eShop games that I've been enjoying. The first game we're going to talk about is a game that I had never heard of before. I was literally just browsing the eShop. I saw this game and I saw the price of this game and I said, you know what, let's go ahead and check it out. And that is a game called Biolab Wars. Now what was so attractive about Biolab Wars? Well, it was the price. It's a $2 game. Two bucks. The price of two delicious Burger King tacos will get you Biolab Wars. However, unlike those tacos, these will not give you a stomach ache and loose stool all night long. Biolab Wars is a throwback to NES style platformers, right down to pretty much, well, everything about the game. Aliens are experimenting with labs on Earth, and you choose one of three characters in order to stop them. The characters themselves all feel pretty similar, but one of them is a dog that has been experimented on, which by default makes him the coolest character in Biolab Wars. There are little differences between the characters though, however. If you pick the former marine character, he has a cool motorcycle in one of the levels, whereas our little doggy friend has a liquor sickle to ride in. It's not a huge deal, both the liquor sickle and the motorcycle feel pretty similar, but honestly it's a nice little touch, especially in a $2 game. As you can tell by the gameplay of the game, it's a Contra-inspired game in which you blast through various 2D levels, pick up health and weapon power-ups, and of course fight bosses. The game isn't super long or anything, it only has 7 stages in the game that are broken up into little segments. And I wouldn't say it's quite as hard as a lot of NES games, but it does offer a good challenge as you are platforming and blasting your way through various enemies. You only have three lives in this game, and you don't have any continues. You also have limited health power-ups, and of course limited one-ups that are scattered throughout the levels. But the game does allow you to start at the last level you completed on your next playthrough, which makes things a bit easier. The graphics in the game are honestly pretty nice. There's some little parallax scrolling effects going on, interesting backdrops, nice sized bosses, and lots of action going on on screen. The audio in the game is pretty decent as well, with chiptune music to keep your blood flowing. Biolab Wars doesn't really do anything particularly great or anything like that, and it isn't a Game of the Year candidate, but at $2 for a super solid NES-inspired 2D platformer, it's really a must-snag for retro fans. You could skip the Burger King tacos once, I promise it'll be okay. Go ahead and check out Biolab Wars. Earthfall Alien Horde is yet another alien-inspired game because I guess we're going to talk a lot about aliens in this video, but this game is very different from our last game. Whereas the last game was a 2D side-scroller, this is a first-person shooter and packs an interesting punch. There's really not too many first-person shooter games on the Nintendo Switch, and there's even less co-op Left 4 Dead style games on the system, and honestly, those games are super fun to play. Yeah, they aren't necessarily packed with depth or anything like that, but the pick up and play style of the game is something that's always been attractive to me. Earthfall Alien Horde looks to fill that Left 4 Dead style of gameplay that the Nintendo Switch lacks by pretty much emulating the formula to a T. As you can tell, we have another alien invasion on Earth, and you play along with three other characters that are tasked with stopping this invasion. The game features 20 different levels in which you're doing things like blowing up aliens, defending certain areas, trying to access new areas in the levels, and of course a myriad of other tasks. You constantly have three players playing alongside of you, either being AI characters or human characters who are playing online. The game has drop in and drop out online, which definitely spices things up. You can also play with friends as well, and the game even utilizes the Nintendo Switch voice chat app that literally everyone loves to death and has, you know, no flaws whatsoever. Great, great little phone app there. Mission variety in the game is pretty solid to be honest, and I enjoyed seeing what was next after our point of progression. There's various weapons to pick up on the map, and you can even use printers to print off new weapons as well. Obviously, team play is very important in this game, as your friends are constantly getting down, so you gotta hurry up and rescue them, and just in general work together. Don't stray from the pact. Earthfall isn't a perfect game, however. The enemy types are a bit stock for my liking, and while the game looks good in general, there are definitely some noticeable performance issues when it comes to the frame rate. There's some noticeable dips that you'll encounter when you're playing the game, and it can be a little bit annoying. 
Still though, as much as it might not be the most original game I've played on the Nintendo Switch, Earthfall manages to be really fun and addicting, and I constantly find myself wanting to play just one more level to blast through aliens and save humanity. If you only own a Nintendo Switch and you're looking for some Left 4 Dead style action, Earthfall is definitely a game worth checking out, and it's a lot of fun. The next game we're going to talk about is a Nate from Direct Feed Games pick, and really, he plays a lot of weird stuff, games with like panties and stuff like that, but he would not shut up about this game on the recent episode of the Spawncast. Well, someone actually donated a bunch of money to the Spawncast and told us all to buy this game, Sayonara Wild Hearts. And honestly, I'm glad this dude did because this game is absolutely fantastic. I'll be honest with you, I, I have no freaking idea what's happening in the story of this game, like, like literally none. The game does kind of tell you, and there's some like weird tarot cards and weird enemies, dreams and stuff. I, I don't know what's happening, but I do know one thing. Sayonara Wild Hearts is a unique experience unlike anything I've really ever played before. The core gameplay is pretty simple. You complete levels by getting the highest score possible. You increase your score by picking up little hearts or various things on the level, avoiding attacks at the last second, or by doing quick time events in a timely manner. It's honestly pretty hard to explain this game in terms of gameplay, because it's constantly shifting. Sometimes it'll be a standard avoid things level on a bike, sometimes you'll be shooting down wolves, sometimes it'll be a slight puzzle game. The game is constantly shifting the gameplay style, but honestly, I like that. It definitely keeps the game fresh throughout. The real draw to me in this game, though, has to be the presentation, which is honestly just absolutely top-notch. It has an 80s Tron style visual style, and the animation is just ridiculously smooth and sleek. The real standout to me is the soundtrack of this game, however, which is a combo of like 80s pop and 80s synthwave and works in tune with the game. I wish I could play some of it for you, but I'm pretty sure it's copyrighted stuff, but I'll have a link to the creator's channel in the description box down below. As I played the game, I noticed that moving with the song's rhythm or pressing buttons during the rhythm was one of the things you were supposed to be doing. So I don't know, maybe this is a rhythm game after all. The soundtrack is just so good though, I ended up tracking it down on YouTube because I am a fan of this style of music. My only real major issues with Sayonara Wild Hearts were honestly rather minor. I felt like a few of the levels were too short. Like sometimes you'd be starting to get into it and the next thing you know, you're on to the next level. The game itself is pretty short too, with about an hour and change for the main game, but I think it works well because it doesn't really overstay its welcome. There's some unlockable content as well, and every level is graded on a bronze, silver, or gold ranking, so you might want to replay the levels to get a higher rank. It's definitely a very unique game, but if you're liking what you're seeing from it, I highly suggest you end up picking it up. I guess Nate is right once in a while after all. And finally, no one in space can hear you scream. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're talking about another Alien game. And that is Alien Isolation for the Nintendo Switch. Another damn Alien-related game. This is literally the third Alien-related game on this list. I guess I've just been watching too much Ancient Aliens. Anyways, Alien Isolation was honestly one of my favorite games on the Xbox One. So when the Nintendo Switch version was announced at E3 2019, I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. I'd like to revisit the game. Alien Isolation takes place within the Alien film franchise, with you playing as the daughter of Ellen Ripley, Amanda Ripley, who bears a striking resemblance to her mother. Amanda has discovered that her mother's flight recorder is aboard a remote space station and voyages there with her team, but ends up getting separated upon arrival and must fend for herself. This space station isn't unoccupied, however, though, with terrified and territorial human characters, out-of-control artificial intelligence robots, and of course, a big-ass alien that wants you and everyone else dead. The game is a first-person game, but it relies more on stealth and hiding rather than combat. There is some combat in the game as you get a couple different guns, a flamethrower, a melee weapon, and other defense mechanisms, but you're mostly running, hiding, and trying to avoid combat in general, as the game is really a stealth horror game at its core. I think it does a brilliant job of it too, as the game is honestly just super tense. The game features very intelligent characters, and the facehugger alien that is tracking you down is very smart, and adds a huge level of tension to the game, and will kill you multiple times. The game also has a crafting system in which you craft health packs, EMP grenades, flares, and more items based on things that you pick up in the game. The Switch version of the game also includes all of the previous DLC from the original game, and even adds in motion controls as well. 
Graphically, the game looks fantastic. And while it's not quite as good as the Xbox One version, I would say it's pretty damn close and looks absolutely fantastic in handheld mode as well. Feral Interactive handled this game, and after the fantastic port of Grid and now Alien Isolation, Feral Interactive is definitely another contender for the best porting company on the Nintendo Switch. Now, Alien Isolation is an older game though, and it's available for much cheaper on other platforms. And unfortunately, it is a digital only game. But if you only own a Nintendo Switch, you enjoy stealth horror games, this is an absolute must buy in my opinion. And honestly, I would love to see a sequel to this game one day as well, as they did a fantastic job with it, and I think there's a lot more to explore within the Alien universe. All right, so those are some Nintendo Switch eShop games that I have been playing lately. So let me know in the comments section down below if you are playing any of these games, you plan to pick up any of these games, or if you liked any of these games, and maybe what games I've been missing on the Nintendo Switch eShop that I should end up checking out as well. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. Slap that like button as well. Let's get some good likes on this video. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.